Hey guys, how's everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If the camera's picking it up, I hear a dull saw in the background. If not, you guys know the sound. It's irritating. Um, <laughs> I bet it's throwing powder and I bet they're pulling on it with all they've got. <laughs> I bet the camera's picking it up. <laughs> anyway, on with today's video. <laughs> I just can't get over this dull ass saw in the background. Anyway, uh, we've got a Farmer Tech 660 sent by Robert, one of our followers. I think his username's like MM88SWRT. If I've got that wrong, man, I do apologize, but the saw came all the way from Oregon. He paid a good Benjamin to ship it here, so uh, <laughs> let's see if we can get it out and see if we can at least figure out why it's not popping over. All right, it's a good looking saw. Uh, got a bark box on it. I've got the handlebar here in my hand. We're gonna put that back on it first. Um, he pulled it off for shipment. It actually sent a couple different top ends in the box. One brand new, I think one he said was the original top end that had a little bit of pork work done to it, but I swear I'm thinking I'd talk with him a while back and it seemed like the pork timing on it was just kind of all over the place. I'm trying to get that where you guys can see what I'm doing. Which most of you know how to put a handlebar on a saw, but you never know. Pretty nice out today. It's up in the 50s. Um, and bolts are kind of not sure what's up with that. Let's see how the handle's made. I bet it goes through one part plastic and no. It should have two short bolts in it or screws or rather. Um, I'll see if I can locate something to go back in it that's correct. Um, I'm pretty sure it's to hold a scrunch. About sure of it. It'll hold my T-handle. <laughs> but here in the shop, um, it is probably 40 degrees or something. It's a workable. I don't think my feet are going to get cold. I don't have a whole lot of time this afternoon. Um, but I do have enough time to fool with this saw a little bit see what we got going on. But I'll look around here and we can't put that back in it with that full wrap because it will go through and puncture the tank. I hope it's not done it already yet. Um, that's just a simple mistake. I've done that myself before. Um, it is what it is. What it is. Well, that's a non-issue. All right. See if we can get this fitted in place. What's funny is when I go to pull the top end off of it, which we are going to do. Uh, probably see where everything's at. I want it to be right. I want it to last for him when I send it back home because he got a lot of money in shipping back and forth. I think I know of a way I can ship it back a little cheaper. Seemed like I seen priority mail tape on the box when it got here. Um, a lot of the time the post office will not tell you and I didn't know it you know, if I did an eBay, I wouldn't know it, but USPS Ground Advantage. Uh, it only takes like two days longer to get there. In most cases, some cases it can take up to seven, but um, you're looking at like half the cost or sometimes a third of the cost. And for that, we an aftermarket handlebar. That thing fits sweet, fits real nice. I 
Okay guys, that'll hold it for now. Uh, I'm not gonna stick that big long screw back in it. Guys, I always check the fuel line. One of the first things I do when fooling with the saw. And if I fooled around, this camera got knocked out of frame. I do apologize, but if so, all we've done is put a handlebar on. Um, I'm back and forth on cameras. If one's dead, I grab the other. If I don't have one with me, I use my phone. If I hadn't mentioned it before in videos, I'm a camera nerd. Um, <laughs> I've big into photography, have been for years. I think I have, I'd actually gave it to my daughter, but I've like got Canon's very first consumer DSL camera they ever made. The old 300D. Um, <laughs> most people are not gonna know what that is, but um, big old silver camera, but anyway what do you guys say if we can get this thing to bust off and one thing i will add is this one has the typical kit saw sticky trigger um, it's sticking right now i'm not even a hundred percent sure we've got throttle on the carburetor it feels awfully weak let's see what it does decompression in Boy, that cord's short. It's trying to pop. Four pulls on a 660. She should have done popped by now. Something's up, ain't it? And something don't feel right. I'm not even going to keep pulling on that. Alright, so like I said, something doesn't feel right. Um, probably said it three times. <laughs> um, if I have one of those screws, it's going to be right there because I went through all of my, or some of my extra screws and bolts and dug all of the steel hardware out. I don't have to order one of those hardware kits for steel saws. Um, so I don't like going and pulling hardware off of my parts units or future potential projects. And if you don't know, those are going to have a long screw goes in. Um, and guys, just to let y'all know, I've been moving some saws out. I don't have a lot of farmer tech stuff left. Um, I've let about half of them go. I sold my 380. I'm not for sure who got did it went on eBay. Um, I hope it was one of you guys got it. Uh, the 440, I know one of you guys got it because he had emailed me and got it out so that fired ran good and then quit. But the intake boot clamp had got loose um that's the problem with these aftermarket saws it just it just ain't the oem um he said he tightened the intake boot clamp back up and, you know it was a done deal ran good afterwards i think his name was randy um and uh Another one of you fellas, uh, Joe, had bought my MS-460. I almost didn't want to let that one go, um, but I have a real OE-046 that's in mint condition. Um, and I can always build more kit saws. It ain't no big deal. I'm just trying to thin the herd out a little bit. And... What is hitting? That just doesn't feel right at all. Let me loosen some coal up and move it back. What in that? Buddy, I believe that's hitting the squish band. I don't know. That is weird. This one could have just let go. We'll look at the clutch side of things. We tighten the coil back down. Somebody's probably like, you didn't set it. I'll set it back later. 
but um, let's hope something over here is catching it. It's free as a clutch, just spin on a holly, holly doubt it. Well, I guess I put that handlebar on for no reason. <laughs> All right. Um, I swear, man, that feels like it's hitting the squish, man. Either that or it sucked something in. I'll about bet it's hitting the squish, man. I knew it wasn't right when I went to try to pull it over. Um, that's why he said he wanted to send it to me. He knew I would get it right. And guys, uh, when you guys make comments like that, um, it means a lot. Like, really, it does. Um, no joke. Um, I see you did leave that out. Um, and you greased it. Wasn't well, no fines going to get past there, that's for sure. Um, let's pull the air down out. But, um, back to the farmer ticks. Um, I have another 660 sold. I'll probably keep one of them, but it is one or the other. Um, same fellow that bought the 460. Um, I've got other saws I'd like to part ways with. If anyone's interested in the uh, the 590 Echo, I'd like to let it go. The uh, 395 Farmer Tech, I know a lot of you had asked about that. Um, I know why, because when I looked around, that orange one and the kit, this ain't the easiest thing in the world to come across. Maybe in different brands, maybe a Neo Tech or something, but it wasn't hitting the spark plug. Um, it's got a good open gap. All right, guys, I guess this has turned down into a turned into a tear down video. I know a lot of these the. Uh, I've heard a lot of guys say that they've had wrist pin failures. Um, that could be possible what's wrong here, but if it was a wrist pin, it would be hitting while it was running, I guess. It would stretch out. So, I don't know. Um, something could have let go or it sucked something in it. Something's hitting solid somewhere in the cylinder, and you don't want to do that. I'm kind of having to work around the camera here. Um, yeah, I will have to figure something out with that too on this trigger. But hopefully we can figure this thing out. These things are usually like super simple to work on. I don't even think the trigger was in the carburetor. It wasn't. That's why it felt so weird, I guess. If it was running at all, that could have been why it actually stopped, but I would lean more toward whatever's locking it up at the top. I had a uh, 290 here a while back that we fully rebuilt. It belonged to one of Simple Man's logger buddies, and yes, guys, people do log with farm ranch, homeowner style saws. It's not uncommon at all. Um... Not uncommon at all, uh, but it was doing that same damn thing. It would hit at the top, and what had happened? A piece of the muffler had actually rotted away in the front. You know how those mufflers are made, where someone had drilled it out, I guess, years ago, and it had sucked that piece of shrapnel back in. And honestly, the saw wasn't even hurt. Um, but you know, I had it all the way stripped down. I just went ahead and done a full rebuild on it anyway. Um, you know, just to make sure it was right. It was like a new saw when it left here. But if you ain't never tore one of these down, this is, I've got multiple tear down videos on these things, I know. And I'm about 100% sure this handlebar is going to come back off. Might as well just pull it. I don't know 
if there's an impact driver sitting here or not over there it's such a drill I know one's in the house where the, my daughter and her boyfriend are kind of redoing her bedroom and they've had my 12 volt impact driver in there for a while It's real exciting stuff. But if I've got any saws and it's not, I know everybody wants a John Zerid. Um, I only have two, technically. I do have most of a that I could put together, like a 2150, that style saw. Um, but I'm kind of gathering parts slowly over time to do that. Um, the only others I have are the 70 cc's. I've actually got two 2171's. One has a big bore and one has an OE 50 millimeter top end. Don't really want to part ways with those. The red stuff's just a little hard to find. You don't find it around here at all. And if you do, nobody wants to part with it, which I completely understand. All right. Last it. I got two totes sitting under this workbench. Now I'm making headway on the new shop. I've got, I don't know, um, not quite half of the OSB up on the walls, but I'm gonna have to trim all of that out. It's gotta be plastered. It don't have to be. I could just put it I'll just as is and go in and go to work and but I want it to be nice. I don't have a whole lot of money in it. I think once it's all said and done I might have a little over two grand in the whole building and a small Dutch barn. We're talking a you know an eight by eight or a ten by ten. I don't even think you can pick up for under nine thousand dollars now or around here anyway. Everything's just Price on everything's just stupid. And if you don't know, on these newer saws, um, the very, very old 066s have the smaller bolt, but all these 660s and later 066s with the bigger oil tank, six millimeter bolt or M6, whatever. Um, 064 same way has the smaller the m5 and on m4 i don't know <laughs> um that one is phillips head <laughs> actually my impact driver is here and it has a phillips bid in it where i've been using it well, let's throw that i've got the right bolt to go back in it um Bark box. What I hear rattling. Oh, the bolt for the dogs. I don't remember if he told me he ported this one or not. Um, my bark box had a screen in it on the inside. Maybe he cut this one off. Oh, anyway. Maybe that's not a bark box. Maybe that's a straight shot. I don't know. No, it's a bark box, I think. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. Well, I can see the piston doesn't look bad. Now, dang, she's hitting solid. On top dead center. There's something in there, I'll guarantee it, guys. Muffler off and out of the way. He told me to put him on blast. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Um, if there is a mistake here, guys, people make mistakes. We're all human. Nobody's perfect. Um, 
I'd never put nobody on blast on camera. I've seen other guys do it. Um, if it's in a situation, you know, where somebody ripped someone off and they knew better, yeah, go ahead. But if something's a simple mistake, like I just told you guys earlier, I sold a man a saw that I had ran all of last uh, fall and winter and up into the spring. Videos all over the channel of it. Um, and he gets it and the intake boot clamp comes off, which is very, very typical of aftermarket intake boots. We all know that. Um, I normally drip a little Loctite on them, but um, who knows? We all know how the mail is too. These things get thrown around. I've sent saws down to Simple Man before and he get them and say it looked like it had been threw out the back of an airplane. Um, and I always package everything well. Um, I'd sent one once, I think he said the ignition switch on a 365 was uh, knocked almost out of it. And said you could tell it was done during shipment by how rough the box looked. Um, I ain't saying that's what happened with that intake boot clamp. I'm just saying probably the aftermarket intake boot clamp worked off. But it is what it is. Um, But if anyone was interested in that Echo 590, um, I'd make someone a really, really good deal on it. Bar chain and all. I just don't need it. I've got probably half a dozen saws in that CC category. And I know it's a good sound build or good sound saw. I took it down to Dad's and we ran it. Uh, Dad loved it. Um, if anything, I might just take it and give it to him if I don't sell it. She stuck on there good. And I got her mallets in the house because they were laying flooring and needed it. The intake boot push through. We'll get this stuff off of there. I don't feel dumb if it still won't turn over. Feel real dumb. They also have M6 in the cylinder. Uh, so does an 046. No 044 uses a smaller bolt. If you do a 046 swap onto an 044, which we've done here, we've done one for Yankee Nimrod. Um, I can see where it was hitting the squish band. Hmm. Top of the piston doesn't look bad. Like I said, we have two other top ends of sir clips are in it. I feel dumb if it still won't rotate. Yep, she was hitting the squish band. <laughs> Spin them free as can be. It is what it is. Um, I'd have had to squish a little tide on it, man. Does look like you'd uh, deck the bottom of the cylinder. Um, I don't see a death ring in the top of this cylinder. Um, what I'll do, well, something looks funky about the top of the exhaust port. Wow, it's like the roughest chamfer I've ever seen. I don't know if it'll pick it up and show it or not. Let me get the camera off the tripod. Maybe that'll show up. There you go. Um, this cylinder's untouched. It hadn't been ported, but um, it does look like the bottom of it had been decked. Maybe, maybe not, but um, he sent the factory top end that came with it. Um, I think he'd been grinding on it a little bit and sent another brand new big bore top end. Um, what I'll do is we'll check everything out. Um, I'm really not wanting to use this piston anyway where I know it's been slapping. I'd never want to put it back in there. Um, yeah, I can feel a lip around the crown. 
the least little bit. You'll get a lot of saws that are that way. Um, like if they've got like a million hours on them. Um, I've got a bunch of them here. Like if they've got the death, death rattle, I call it. If you'll refer back to Justin Weaver's 026 video. Um, I'd shown where that piston, where they rock at the top and at the bottom. Um, it will actually create a lip around the outside of the top of the piston on one side or the other. If it's been around a really, really damn long time, that lip will be all the way around. Um, but anyway, guys, that's probably it for this one. You guys are going to get to see uh, how to port a 660 video, it looks like. Um, I'll try to video of it what I can if it's cold and I'm kind of trying to move things along with what little time I have to do. It makes it hard to shoot a big long video, but I had a little bit of time. I said I'm going to go in here and check this saw out um, and we'll see what's up. Um, but yeah, anyway. Thank you guys and really, really, I truly mean that. Thank you all, anybody that watched it. Uh, it does truly mean a lot. Um, with that said, I hope everybody has a great day.